the Coffee Talk with Kurt Thompson. One thing I've observed in real life and online when it comes to working on scales is that there are a couple of techniques that aren't out there. I mean, I've, I've looked at violin teachers on YouTube, sax teachers, flute teachers, piano teachers, um, of course, trumpet and brass, and I haven't seen these specific strategies for improving your scales. So today, I'm going to be giving you three strategies and maybe a bonus one as well that you might already know about to really speed up and make your scales faster and more efficient and well-learned. We all know about uh, taking your scales slow and working up to fast because we know if you just start a scale and try to go as fast as you can over and over that uh, you're likely not going to do that well because you're going to end up making mistakes and missing notes and that's going to get logged into your brain. So there's actually a couple of techniques, but uh, I'm going to be posting this in in groups, not just for trumpet and brass, but also flute players, uh, bassoon or oboe, uh, maybe even strings, because this is kind of a universal uh, strategy that will actually work for your scales, regardless of what instrument that you play. And this, think of this more like the inner game of uh, scales. Think of this as the inner game of scales. You've heard that book, The Inner Game of Golf or Basketball. So this is going to be more of a psychological or mindset that's going to help you. Um, inner game of scales. And so this is also cool because, especially for uh, wind, wind musicians, where their face gets tired, they get tired because of the breath, you can actually utilize these psychological scale techniques when you're taking a rest. You're, you know, doing an etude, and your fingers are cramping up. You, well, you know, you know you need to take a rest. So on these rests, you can multitask these strategies for improving your scales. And so let me give you the example of the first one. Now, this is, this is um, obvious to me, but I'm just astounded how all over, and I've checked, I have checked all over, nobody seems to be teaching this. And I've taught it for many, many years with great success, especially for students auditioning for a mid-state band, all-state band, um, honor band, solo and ensemble. Here in Texas, they call it UIL. So uh, these students have nailed their scales quicker. And also, even if you get nervous, you tend to be a little bit more an automatic pilot. So it actually helps out with stage fright if you're auditioning. So number one, the first gambit strategy or technique for improving your scales, and remember, this is the inner game of scales, we're using our mind, is to say the name of the notes in the scale up and down. Simple, right? But why haven't you been doing it? How come nobody's talking about it? Maybe they don't know. Let's just take plain vanilla C major. And it's just a C major for your instrument. Maybe you did this back in fifth or sixth grade when you were first learning, you know, that's what a C looks like. But since then, maybe you haven't thought about the actual names of the notes. Uh, technique number one is to say the names of the notes in the scale up and down without hesitation. And you could start, you know, slow, obviously. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, B, A, G, F, E, D, C, like that. And if, if you're a younger player watching this video, of course, you're going to go a lot slower than that. Now, you don't want to be looking at the notes on a page, that would be number one, because then you're kind of cheating, right? You can do that to begin with, but after that, then you would utilize this technique. So this is not looking at any page or anything uh, visual. It's coming from your mind, the inner game of scales. So once again, whatever scale it could be, uh, if you went to F sharp, F sharp major for everybody has how many sharps? Four sharps? No, six sharps. So you would do the same thing for a typical hard key. You know, there's, I guess, a ideology out there that there are no hard keys. But the fact of the matter is, on certain instruments, some scales lend themselves uh, easier, and some scales lend themselves more difficult, just because of the finger combinations or the bowing, or you know.
know, the break that you might have to go over, whatever. There, so yeah, in, in theory, all scales are equal and there are no hard scales, but in reality, there are some hard scales. So for trumpet, anytime you start to throw in the third finger, in those combinations, the scales do get harder simply because the third finger is not as strong as the first two fingers. And also the first two fingers are more independent. The third finger tends to be tied to the second finger here. This is just for trumpet folks. And you can see this example, uh, like I wiggle my fingers. What happens if I tie this down? And now watch, watch me wiggle. Look at the third finger, just, just not able to really move. So this is an example where when you're utilizing the third finger of the trumpet in music, it's going to be more of a challenge just, just because of our anatomy. You can overcome that challenge, but it still doesn't mean it's um, as easy as a scale where you involve well, mainly um, the first two fingers, like for us, F major, concert E flat. We don't have to worry about the third finger. As a result, trumpet players tend to like F major quite a lot. So if we went to F sharp, which for trumpet folks um, does have a lot of third finger action in there, um, at least the first part of the scale, and it does have six sharps. So you'd have to mentally think F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, B, C sharp, D sharp, E sharp, F sharp, E sharp, D sharp, C sharp, B, A sharp, G sharp, F sharp. Did I get it? Yeah. So that has to be in your noggin. It has to be mental. So that is one example. Now you, you also want to try to speed this up if you can. So whatever scale you're working on, you start slow. We'll go back to playing vanilla C. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, and so forth, and then come back down. Now remember, I kind of broke it up here because for the sake of time in this video, I know it's going to be a long video regardless, but I'm trying to chop off some of the time. Uh, but you don't want to break it up. Um, a lot of people do have trouble, especially intermediate players have trouble when they have to come back down the scale and they'll, they'll um, chip a note, they'll flub, you'll hear a little pause or something and we don't want that. We want you to come right up and, and right back down. So technique number one is the inner game of scales is to mentally be able to say the notes up and down fast. Just say the names of the notes of the scale and regardless if you're playing violin, piano, voice, bassoon, sax, it doesn't really matter. Uh, so that's why I'm going to put this to, out to all groups uh, that I'm involved in on Facebook because it's practical knowledge for you and I don't see it anywhere. I mean, it's just like uh, this is like some secret techniques here that I know about and nobody else knows about for uh, really enhancing and learning your scales better. Okay, so now I'm going to get more instrument specific. And this is a cool technique too. Again, it doesn't involve playing. So you can utilize this during a rest or a break. You're multitasking here. You're resting your fingers or you're resting your, your breath and your, and your mouth or whatever, uh, but you're still getting something done. The next uh, technique or strategy for the inner game of scales is to finger your scales on your instrument. Now, obviously if you play piano, well then you're really doing the scale. So for, for piano players, this might not necessarily count. But for everybody else, I'm thinking of violin players here. Actually, violin, yeah, if you, violin players could do it. Um, if you just want to remove the, the right hand and just, you know, try to finger through some of the, yeah, you could do it with violin. What we're going to do here, again, without playing, we're just going to finger the scale. Let's go to C major for trumpet players. And so here I go. That was the finger for C major. Uh, just by doing that, by taking out the plane of it, where your, your ears kind of are a crutch and they kind of help you along with the scale, now there's no sound. You're just purely working on the finger technique. Here, here, here it is again. I'll go slower for the intermediates. I'm starting now. Okay. Regardless if you play trumpet, you could be on sax and do the same thing. Just don't play, but you're going to work through your fingers. Make sure to pound the keys down hard. Grip them hard, whatever instrument that you play on. Flute, same thing. You're going to, you're really going to, you really want to bang the right notes into your brain and you have to really press and strike the keys hard. Uh, clarinet as well. That's technique number two and it really works because you can be resting. If you're, if you're resting from working on an etude or something else, 
and you're tired, you can be working this technique instead of wasting time, instead of checking your phone, right? For, you know, who left you a message on Facebook. Again, for like, for here, here it is for trumpet, but this could be on everybody's instrument. I'm banging them down pretty hard. Now a little faster. Now a lot of advanced players will find C major uh, pretty easy. But if, of course, you're not going to be working on just the easy ones. Uh, let's take, um, let's take like um, F sharp again. Watch again. Can you do that? Can you do it faster? There we go. See? Uh, I'm not really thinking about it too much because I've worked these own strategies myself for years. Although I'm satisfied with my playing most of the time, there's always room for improvement no matter what level you are, even if you're professional. And so we can keep being a student of this instrument or your instrument. You can be a student of your instrument all your life, even if you're rated the, the number one violin player in the world. There's probably still something that you can work on and improve, right? That's kind of the nature of this tutorial. So far we've gone over in the inner game of scales, uh, mentally saying the names of the scales when you go up and down on your instrument. Uh, the second thing is to finger the scales in your instrument, right? What would be the third thing? The third thing would be to say the keys if you can, or the violin position if you can, um, or the slide position if you're on trombone. And for trumpet, it would be the valve combination. So for um, French horn and tuba, baritone, euphonium, and trumpet would be your valve combinations or rotor combinations, trombone slide, obviously. And for uh, now, instruments that have more keys, this will be a little bit more of a ordeal for you because you're not gonna be able to spit them out as fast, but still you want to do the best that you can. For trumpet, for example, um, you've already seen me do the C major scale. This is open position, one, two, three, or one and two, two and three, one and three, two, one, three. Of course, this is an alternate. Um, so now watch how I do this. So if I'm gonna say the valve combinations, it would be like this. Open, one and three, one and two, one, open, one and two, two, open, two, one and two, open, one, one and two, one and three, open. Slower, open, one and three, one and two, one, open, one and two, two, open, two, one and two, open, one, one and two, one and three, open. So now your brain is getting exactly what you have to do when you play it. That's actually what's going through um, the physical kinetic process there where you're doing everything. The, it's realism, but when you take all that away, your brain is still um, able to grasp onto these fingerings. And by doing that, you're kind of segregating that in your brain and you're making that even more crystal clear. So when you go back to your instrument, you're gonna be that much better. So again, uh, let's do it slow. And then this is just for my instrument. You'll have to transpose it to whatever, whatever instrument that you play. So just the fingerings for this instrument would be Open one and three, one and two, one, open one and two, two, open two, one and two, open one, one and two, one and three, open. I didn't go slow, did I? Let me try one more time slow. Open one and three, one and two, one, open one and two, two, open two, one and two, open one, one and two, one and three, open. Uh, another way to do it would be not to have your instrument nearby. Let me set the instrument down. And don't don't um, unconsciously finger through now I'm totally mental and you have to just do it um, almost in your head with not even pretending you're playing your instrument so again what you just saw here but without me kind of role modeling on my fingers open one and three one and two one open one two two open two one two open one one and two one and three open so there i'm not even helping myself out by fingering along all right, so those are the three main techniques that I have not seen anybody else working uh, with their students, unless they're secretly doing it. But in this day and age of a lot of these things being transparent, somebody else would have popped up on YouTube or somewhere talking about this specific strategy for scales.
and they haven't. So that leads me to believe that possibly a lot of professionals and teachers have not thought about this for helping out their students. And maybe they haven't even considered it an option for helping themselves when it comes to scales. So I believe this will be quite an interesting tutorial for most musicians that would like to get better at their scales. Um, now the bonus, the bonus technique I talked about, now this is one that, that is known by I think about almost all musicians and teachers that are at least at the advanced level or pro, and that's simply memorizing the scale. So a lot of younger students, beginners and intermediates, of course, they're always looking in their book and they're going to the back of the book where their chromatic scale is and they're looking for the fingerings. Or uh, I've even had some eighth graders and ninth graders that uh, couldn't get out of the habit of writing in their fingerings, I mean, or the names of the notes in their actual music for concerts and stuff. And uh, those kids just drove me crazy. They said, don't write the fingerings. You're, you're enabling yourself to be a poor musician um, as a result of doing that. So going back to memorization, this is a bonus. And the reason I consider it a bonus is because I figure most of you know about that. But if you're a ninth or 10th grader wanting to get better, wanting to move up in your chair test and wanted to do better at UIL, honors, solo and ensemble um, auditions, drum corps, DCI auditions, college scholarship tri auditions, um, all state band auditions, um, you're gonna have to have your scales memorized because what happens when you memorize something, anything? Huh? Mm. You overlearn something, right? If you have something memorized, you've overlearned it. You can learn something without memorizing, right? We can learn a lot of things without memorizing it, but when you do memorize something, you have overlearned it. And we really want to excel in music to the point where it's difficult for us to make a mistake. I believe in practicing to the point of mastery where when you go to play it, you'd have to purposely try to mess it up. That's where I believe mastery is. When you play it without thinking, and it just comes out almost perfectly or perfectly. And you actually have to purposely try to screw it up. So that's mastery. That's the point that we all want to get to on everything. So memorization is a key component of that. If you have something memorized, um, you're likely going to be able to play it better, especially play it better under pressure. So that was the bonus technique. And um, again, probably most of you knew about that, but just in case you didn't, um, you need to include that in your strategy for getting better with scales. So I hope you enjoyed that. Let's do a recap of what we started off with. Remember, you're gonna say the names of the notes uh, in the particular scale that you're working on. Start off slow and just say the names. Again, you don't need to have, it might even be best not to have your instrument in hand. So you totally have to, to mentally do it. You could even try doing it with your eyes closed. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, B, A, G, F, E, D, C. Boom. That even seems a little bit different with the eyes closed. And then you're going to try to get that faster and faster, right? Um, faster and faster means you have it um, down pat and more automatic. All right, the two other strategies that we talked about today in this inner game of scales and scale mastery would be to finger through the scales, of course, without playing them. And uh, you can do that, uh, maybe you can make it more, more difficult, like on a violin. Um, you're not going to be adding sound to it with the bow, so you just use your fingers. Um, the other instruments, obviously, is like bassoon, you're just not going to be blown into it. Um, flute, you're not going to be blown into it. So, you know, fingering through the scale and really pounding, pounding the pads down, the, the, the levers down, the, the valves down. Oh, trombone players, how would you do that? Well, you're still going to do the same thing. Earth, six, four, three, one, like that. So you're gonna be doing the slide positions and be very um, um, aggressive with getting out there fast. And then the last thing is saying the fingerings and the combinations. Well, I just did it for a trombone, right? So first, six, fourth, third, first, fourth, two, one, like that. So in your, in your positions, that would be the B flat scale. And then I already demonstrated that for trumpet. Uh, everybody else can do it. It might be more complex the more keys that you have on your instrument, uh, but you can still try to work that out or you can mentally work that out. 
So there you have it, three awesome techniques that will definitely help you improve your scales for anything that you want to do, at the very least, just to become a better musician. Please like this, share it, make a comment. Uh, I really think that if you try it with your students, if you're a teacher, you're going to find they get the scale down quicker and they do much better uh, when it comes to auditions, chair tests, and things like all-state band tryouts. I'm Kurt Thompson. Again, I hope you found some value in this, and I'll see you in the next one. My website, by the way, is trumpetsizzle.com. Bye-bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.